Hello and welcome to Kismet Rising. So today we are doing a general reading for 2023 and we have five options here. The option one, which is the John Bauer Tarot. Option two, which is the Tarot of the 78 Doors. Option three, El Nuevo Tarot de las Hadas. Uh, the Mystical Tarot is option number four and the Book of Shadows uh, Tarot, the volume two, is the option number five. Okay, go ahead, select your option and you can go directly to the reading. So for those of you who've chosen the option number one, which is the John Bauer Tarot, we're asking, what can we expect in 2023? What can we expect in 2023? What can we look forward to? What can we, uh, what do we need to be warned about? And what is it that we've, we need to know, generally speaking, about 2023? So for those of you who've chosen the John Bauer Tarot, we have four sets of cards here for the quarterlies of the year. So we have January, February, March, April, May, and June, July, August, and September, October, November, and December. All right, so let's go into it. So for the first three months of this year, what I see you doing is overcoming disappointments that have, might have become an addictions, that might have led to addictions and um, coming to a place of balance in your life, coming into one with the divine in terms of balance, just creating balance of your life. And this is what's going to lead to joy. So I feel like January, February, March is really a time to heal things in the past, but not just to heal, but to step out of that and to step into a space of empowerment. It's a great time for you to overcome certain habits that you might have had um, that might have uh, displayed some kind of addictive behavior, maybe spending too much of time on on social media or on uh, your devices and um, addressing any kind of disappointment that you might be feeling as a result of um, such routines or such um, habits that you have and um, addressing what's behind that. What is, what, is, what is the reason? What are you running away from? What are you doing instead of doing what you need to be doing? And obviously it doesn't only apply to being addicted. It could just apply to excesses of any sort. So um, perhaps you, you're doing a bit too much of one particular thing. And these cards here are talking to you and saying, well, let's bring this balance here in this version of the temperance card. Uh, let's bring what's necessary for you to bring back your joy, which is in the sun card. And when you bring yourself back into balance, and when you bring yourself into alignment with the spiritual aspect of yourself, then you're going to be attracting and creating a lot of joy in your life. There's also a, a state uh, a sense here that you need to just leave behind things that don't work for you habits that don't work for you perhaps you are used to waking up um, at a certain hour and just you're using the time in a way that is not really working for your well-being it's time to perhaps change the way you sleep and how you sleep or the times that you go to sleep and what you do with your time uh, perhaps it's um Perhaps you're addicted to your work and you wake up and the first thing you do is go to your phone, go to your emails, go to your 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 work and you don't take enough time to meditate and to look after yourself, to, to pamper yourself. And this could also be in, in excess. It's not just an addiction. And so um, it's talking about how this can lead, these kind of imbalances that one has in their lives at certain points can lead to a certain kind of disappointment that you might have, I feel, in yourself, okay, more than 
that others may have in you. You might feel that others may be disappointed in you or you might be letting others down as a result. But I feel that this is not really very much to do with other people. This is very much to do with you and your internal emotions. And when you bring yourself into the state of temperance, uh, of balance, perhaps by incorporating what you don't have in your life. So if you're somebody who works out a lot and works a lot, maybe what you need to incorporate in your life is more relaxation, massage, um, times, in, you know, a, a nice long bath, time out with friends. And if you are somebody who's who's got a lot of downtime, perhaps you're not being as productive as you can be. Perhaps you're not making a kind of contribution that you you know you can make, but you know, you're just not able to do it. And I think that the first quarter of the year is going to ask you, why haven't you been able to do that? That's the question here. And then you're going to also be thinking about how can you bring yourself into balance? So what can you incorporate in your life, even if it's, a, if it's for five minutes a day, that's going to be bringing that balance and it's going to bring a lot of joy. So I feel like by the time you're in March, you're going to feel quite satisfied with yourself. Um, this is just a general reading and very t often times when, when one does a general reading, it's not talking about financial stuff. It's not talking about love stuff because I have already decided I will do a reading on love and on the finance finances or, or career. And so if you want to know more about that, then go to one of the other videos that are going to be uploaded in the next couple of days. All right. So let's look at the second quarter. I'm just going to adjust this. So for the next quarter of the year, uh, which is April, May, June and July, what I feel here is that you're going to be starting of the year uh, in, I mean, sorry, you're not going to be starting of the year because you've finished with March here. So you're going to be starting off April with quite a lot of energy, with quite a lot of drive, and you're going to be moving into a direction um, with quite a lot of force. And it it could be that you are, you're leaving behind the energy of the first half of the, well, the first quarter of the year, and you're moving towards something that is of what you believe is of greater value to you and you're moving in a direction which is helping you to put into practice or um what what it is that you've learned already in the first half of the year or in the first quarter of the year sorry and um i feel here that uh, as you are moving through that what you're going to find is that you find yourself in quite a contemplative mood again uh you you find yourself really questioning a lot of what you've um, been privy to, what you've learned in the first part of the year and how it applies to your life. So I feel like some of you might be in different spaces and different locations from this first quarter to the second quarter. And I feel that um, you might be riding forth with quite a lot of energy and quite a lot of um, motivation, but something might come up which says to you that you need to reevaluate because perhaps uh, things are not exactly the way they were in the first three months. So I feel here, I don't see you coming into any kind of difficulty or something like this, but I see you coming into some kind of space where you are made to think about things and made to contemplate, made to reevaluate what what decisions you've made or what, not so much about the decisions, but the, the path that you've chosen for yourself. So you might think that you're going in one direction, but you find yourself going in a different direction. And really, it's about, you know, really finding your true purpose and aligning with that which is right for you. So you might have come out of March into April thinking that you need to go in one direction, but through the course of May, um, you find yourself in another direction completely. And it's uh, May seems to be a time of great evaluation and contemplation. And I feel like in June, you might be feeling like you need to run away from something almost. Um, you might feel that you need to um, disassociate yourself with something that is dear to you or something that is belongs to you. Perhaps there's a feeling of 
disassociating yourself from family or from community, but something that represents you. Uh, because here you have a knight that's riding away with his cloak covering him and there's no insignia that's showing. But you are doing it under the starry night. And what I see here is that you might have been gung-ho about something, but this level of contemplation here has led you to actually think about which direction you're going to and reevaluate that and turn around and make a different, uh, make it a, a work go into a different direction completely and I think that you're going to find yourself either moving around quite a lot in the first six months of the year and or you m might find yourself going in, in one direction and then finding yourself going in another direction so this could be um, work related for some of you who need to maybe travel east and then south and then w west and <laughs> Uh, or east again and then and then north and you know it feels like you are quite a, like zigzagging around the place here and that um and that's come from quite a good start to the year and then just needing to reassert what your soul purpose is and understand where it is that you're moving to and in which direction that you're moving to and whether it has significance to you um and i think this would be related also to some of what you've um, experienced earlier on, uh, which has allowed you to come into this kind of balance. It feels to me that this moving away here from something or leaving to go in a particular direction has to do with retaining the balance that you might have created for yourself in the first three months of the year. And it's very much about, about that. I feel here like July could be a month for you where you uh, have a bit of a non-start you know, like you want to start something, you want to do something, but that's being thwarted for some reason. And it's almost like you sitting there and you looking at what you could be doing rather, but not able to do it. I feel like for some of you, this set of cards here has to do very much about you being impacted by something else that's going on in the world. So perhaps you are, you had certain plans for these months, but you can't follow through with it because Perhaps there's a, some kind of crisis in the world or some kind of economic crisis. And so it's made you have to change direction. It's made you have to um, think again about where you're going to. And it's made you have to change your plans or at least your plans are delayed for a little while. So here I feel like there's this fire in you that's wanting to get going. But um, you aren't able to get going. You aren't able to take off as you would like to do so and I think here when you find a card like that like the first the ace of wands um, in a situation where you are raring to go but you're not able to you're feeling blocked in a certain way it's really time to just sit back and see what is it that the world's trying to tell you what is it that the universe is trying to tell you and what can you do at that moment it's not a good idea to just keep pushing when you have something like this come up, when you have this card coming up, it's not going to help you to just keep pushing. It's best to just um, listen, just stop and listen. All right. So here, these cards are for uh, August, September and October. Actually, Sorry, I made a mistake here. This is for, for, um, there's a bit of July energy in here, but this is more, your July is here, I think. Or part of what happens is here for you in July. So apologies for the light that was here that was blowing that out. I've just adjusted it and I hope that this works better. From, so this is actually uh, April, May and June. It's um, I talked a bit about July here, but uh, this is not... There's a bit of July energy coming in here, but I feel it's more towards the end of June, July. Well, the, this kind of, I feel like this is your April, this is your May, uh, and end of May, June, and beginning of July. Also at the beginning of July, this is July, August, and September. I feel here that you are taking action with regard to something. You are working away. You're quite uh, determined to get what you want to get. You are 
moving in a particular direction where you are very forthright. I feel also it might be a time where you begin to study something or learn something where you're applying yourself mentally rather than in regard to sport or or activity. Okay, so it's more a mental activity as opposed to physical activity. And I feel here this this um this is about thwarting physical activity. So it might be that something happens which doesn't allow you to move ahead physically or to to do something physically that you wanted to do. And I see here you have a knight of wands that's also reversed, which also talks about it just restricting the movement forward. So here we have um, you just mowing ahead at the beginning of July. And I think that during this time, um, you're not able to move ahead in one direction, but you are able to make great headway in, in another direction. As you come into August, you might find that you are feeling quite reckless or you might want to take some chances which you would not normally take. I would advise against that. I would say that you ought to be quite cautious during that time because this is a card that could lead to things like ankle sprains or uh, you know, broken hands, that kind of thing. So uh, it's it's something where you could have make it have an error. So I would say just rather be cautious, rather observe your spontaneity and your impulses and look at where it wants you to follow and rather journal about it or draw or express yourself in some kind of artistic way or um, in another way rather than uh, taking action at this point because the action that you might take might become, be quite irrational and not really work in your favor. And I feel that uh, as you come from, to the end of August, September, uh, there is some something that changes. There is some kind of something that happens that changes the course of, uh, I want to say your life, but I, I don't feel it's that dramatic. I feel like it changes quite something quite uh, deep in you it could be like just you know somebody pulling the rug out from underneath you so something that you thought was going to be stable you thought was going to be there that you you were sure it would be there for you um, is no longer there for you so um, it it really causes you to n not just reevaluate, but to take other action in order to be able to ensure your own comfort your own survival your own well-being in the same way that you had here in the second quarter, you had this contemplation and then you had a kind of wanting to take off, but it being a non-starter. I feel here, uh, as you come to the end of September, you're going to find that there's something that you want to get done. There's something you want to do, but you're not able to do it. Now, it might be something simple, like um, you plan to travel somewhere with a friend and that doesn't happen the way it, you, you thought it would. It could be something more dramatic. You know, you're trying to make headway in terms of your work and it's not actually working out the way you want to. Or perhaps you wanted to change direction but you're not able to do it just right now perhaps you've been thinking about moving during this time and you can't actually do it at this at that given time uh, it causes you to wait a little bit longer or something is delayed okay on the whole i think that the months of june uh, i mean sorry july august september could be quite um uh, quite pro you could be quite productive in terms of uh of your of writing you it's a great time to perhaps write a book it's a great time to study it's a great time to start something new as far as something that um, uh, challenges you intellectually is concerned so learning something new it's um uh it's a great time to kind of understand yourself better and your impulses and what drives that and it's also a good time i think in as as you come around july or august because you're aware of this um, this thing that kind of can hit you out of nowhere, um, this kind of force that's happening, that's beyond your control. I would say that in the month of uh, July and August, what you ought to do is be, or even perhaps before that, but I feel like you can't tr prepare for it in advance as much. But I would say in the first um, part of this third quarter, you should take care to be as independent as you possibly can um, so that you're not dependent on somebody who might be withdrawing their support or you might, um, you know, you're not so um, um, stuck uh, or you don't identify so um, 
strongly with a particular place, a particular home, a particular uh, car or whatever. You're not, you're not, um, you don't identify so strongly with them. You're not, you're not, what I mean is you're not attached to it so strongly because if it is then taken away, you were better able to, to, to deal with that eventuality. Now, I don't see you being hurt or, uh, or anything here I just see that but you know I just see that it's something that comes up and you're not able to do what you wanted to do and it surprises you and it's something that is um um it's just it causes you to reevaluate uh or, or replan what your what is necessary for you and your life now I would say that I am reading this quite generally for a whole lot of people so if you want to know more about this then perhaps um, do a reading only for yourself okay and so I feel that that's what you can uh, look forward to and prepare for and be warned of in um, the months of July August and September So as we come to the last quarter of uh, 2023, uh, we're looking at October, November and December. We have the cards here, the Knight of Pentacles. We have the Four of Cups. We have the Six of, of Swords and we have the Knight of Cups that's reversed. So I think as you come to the end of the year, I think it's time for you, especially in October, November and December, to reevaluate your finances, to be able to save some money if necessary, to be able to undertake endeavors that make you more money, especially October, I think is going to be important for that, for you to make some headway as far as your career and your wealth and your well-being and in terms of your wealth is concerned, your financial situation. I feel like um, emotionally or um, in terms of your own inspiration that you might be feeling a little but it might be a bit dull for you. You might be searching for motivation. You might be looking for something to inspire you. And I feel that um, uh, as you come to the end of the year, it's time to set off again and to go somewhere where you can find that inspiration and where you can uh, overcome the dull feeling that you might be having or the boredom that you might be having. I feel also here that around December or so, it might be that you find yourself infatuated with someone or you find yourself very passionate about someone or something that isn't necessarily what is it isn't exactly what you're expecting it to be. So it might just be a kind of temp, uh, infatuation that you have with a particular place, a particular culture, a particular person or something that kind of is there to inspire you or help you overcome this kind of boredom that you might be experiencing. I feel here there's a uh, there's a level of disappointment that you might be experiencing for things not going as well as uh, you had hoped it would be. And this is definitely not, it doesn't have to be this way. You know, it really is, you know, your emotions and your feelings about things can be changed. So if your initial response is disappointment, you can overcome that and say, well, you know what, this is what it is. I'm going to make the most of the situation. And um, I think it's only when you are committed to a particular idea of how things should be that you can create disappointment for yourself. So I think that things are uh, set up here in a very wonderful, in a really nice way in the first three months of the year. And I think that because it's it's so good that you find that um, in the second quarter, uh, it, it's almost like you're coming down from a high from how good it has been. And I think here in the um, in the third quarter, you, you're kind of working with and dealing with things. And even though you're making quite a lot of headway and you're able to make some big um, um, strides going ahead, here there is this uh, sense of you, um, there's still a sense of kind of like, I don't know, like you're making headway, you're going ahead, you're making progress, but there's a sense of uh, being let down. Okay, now I want to say that this let down feeling is just something that you have and you can control. You don't have to have that feeling. You can look at it and think, oh, well, you know what? I've been saved by something because here I've been forced to become more independent. I've been forced to um, take control of my life, you know, and um, and here I, I'm able to make headway. Um, 
Here I'm able to manage my impulses better. Here I'm able to become um, more self-reliant. And here I'm being cautious rather than just uh, striding forth. And here I've made a lot of progress. So there is quite a lot of success that can be had in this year. But it really depends on how you view it and whether you choose to view it as success or whether you choose to view it as prosperity. And here there's definitely an element of being able to move forth with regard to a particular project, with being able to save money, with being able to uh, develop things further. And um, I think that having done that, it's followed by a, sen a, a feeling of being dull or bored, a feeling of things not really working out or uh, or rather that you've, you know, things have worked out sometimes when you've been waiting for something to happen for a very long time and it happens there afterward. It could be quite, um, it's almost like a postpartum depression. It's almost like this um, this depression that comes as a result of having achieved something. And so I think that if you can manage that, it's not really a depression here necessarily, but it's more sadness or a feeling of boredom. And uh, it, if you can manage that, then um, by taking certain action, like removing yourself from there or, or working towards overcoming that in some way, that you're going to feel quite, um, it's going to bring you back to that feeling of being balanced and well again. And I think here in um, in December, you're being warned here that it you might fall in love with something that's not exactly what you expect it to be and I think that that's why these readings are here to kind of warn you uh, so that you can not create it in your life not make it a self-fulfilling prophecy but actually just be aware of it in the in the chance that it does uh, come up so I would um, suggest to you that you come back and look at this reading at uh, later on in the year and see how it um it uh, responds to your life or how it corresponds rather to your life and um, yes and I wish you a fantastic 2023 may it be a much better year than 2022 and uh, may it be a, a really a year when you can experience this harmony in your spiritual life as well as um, make the headway that you're making here uh, and be able to um, look after yourself and take care of the deficits in your life. Um, contemplate enough to be able to to um, to bring yourself out of that state, you know, of whatever that is, you know, to back into a state of of harmony. Because you know, as we know, life often has these challenges, and one has to just go with the flow and kind of make sure you stay afloat with it all. And I see you doing that quite successfully in this reading. And um, yes, I just want to uh, choose one other card um, for the ending of the year. Okay, so for the ending of the year here, um, we have this reverse Knight of Cups. We also have the Six of Cups. And I feel here that it might be that uh, you um, re re get together with somebody that you haven't spent uh, time with in, in a very, very long time. It could be a friend from the past, from your childhood that you reconnect with. It could be the um, that you've kind of fallen in love with someone that makes you, reminds you of the past. It could be that um, you are you are charmed by someone and you feel it, this person makes you feel like a kid again this person makes you feel that kind of joy and uh easiness that light lightness of being and um of a child and i feel here that this uh card here this kind of um this night that's reversed this is this is very much similar there's quite a lot of similarity to this and I actually asked for this card almost as a clarifier for this one because it it it's not the best way to kind of end the the, the year and but this card here shows me that it's nothing to be worried about it's nothing this love that you have that's not exactly what you expect from this place or this person or there's something there's some kind of surprise behind all of this it's nothing that's negative. It's something that's quite lovely, actually. 
it's just that it's an unexpected it's unexpected it's something that um happens out of the blue yeah it could be that you kind of meet someone and you decide quite quickly to get married and so it's kind of like a whirlwind um situation here but i feel that uh it's it will i feel that you will feel that it's the right thing for you and i guess that's what's what matters yeah so anyhow that is um one of the ways in which the year could end i feel also that um it could just be that you spend time with friends and family from uh that you haven't gotten to spend time with in a very very long time it could be that it could be that um you uh arrive at a place in your life where you are just able to let go and just enjoy and um this brings a certain nostalgia into your life and it reminds you of uh, times when you were perhaps in the past or some time when you were very, very young. All right, so I'm going to leave it there. I hope that this has been an informative reading and that it helps you in some way. And I once again wish you a very blessed 2023 and blessings abound from Kismet Rising. And for those of you who've chosen the option number two, which is the Tarot of the 78 Doors, we are asking... What can we expect in 2023? And this is a general reading. So if you want to know specifically about what's going to happen in terms of your love life or in terms of your career or finances, then there will be two other videos which will be uploaded shortly. And um, you can go there for specifics. Okay, so this will just be a general reading. And we asking, what can we expect? What, are, what is it that we should be warned about in 2023? Okay, so the way we're reading these cards is we are looking at the first quarter, the second quarter, the third quarter, and the fourth quarter, okay? And so this would be January, February, March. I feel that you heard that you will be needing to summon your strength to be able to overcome some kind of addiction that you might have or... Um, maybe not an addiction, maybe it's an obsession, or maybe it's um, it's really about a time where you can rein in your thoughts. And um, it could be with regard to a relationship that hasn't actually actualized or hasn't gone the way that you wanted it to go. And um, I feel that, you know, your, your joy has been dampened as a result of that, that you feel that your, um, your faith or your, um, your, your, yeah, your faith, your joy, your happiness has been challenged in this time. I feel that the first three months of this year is going to very much be about moving on from relationships that have not really served you, that have put a shadow over your life and not allowed you to burn as brightly and to be as vibrant as you actually are. I feel that this is a time where it's definitely about fighting to be able to remain strong and to be as um, pulled together as you normally would be. I think, however, that, that what is really positive about this, this set of cards here is that there's a recognition that things need to be improved or that progress can be made. There's a recognition of um, what serves you and what does not serve you, what works in your favor and what doesn't work in your favor. You are able to fight for the strength that you have you're able to uh, understand how how happy you can be how vibrant you can be how bright you can burn and yet uh, and be working towards that regardless of what is actually going on around you so I feel that the first three months of the year is very much about that it's about working towards yourself and and strengthening yourself and also understanding what is uh, really what is good and bad in terms of what serves you and what does not serve you so you know what is it that's been getting you down have there be has there been a relationship that perhaps that hasn't actually served you in the recent uh, times and that you need to move away from that or it hasn't actually worked out in the way that you wanted to um for some people this could just be a love relationship which you have had an interest 
in uh, some a love interest which has shown you some kind of uh, interest as well but hasn't actually uh, gone taken it further or gone further with it and it's about you spending less time thinking about that person and more time um strengthening strengthening yourself and really uh finding out who you are in this time really uh finding your 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 peace again finding your happiness again and finding all the bringing together all different parts of yourself once again so that is for january february um sorry yeah january february and march and this is april may and june so i feel here by the time you get to april you've definitely gotten over whatever heartbreak you've had um whatever disappointments that you've had it feels like you're quite stoic at this point and you've really come to terms with whatever it is in the past where there has perhaps been a breakup where there have been um disappointments and where things haven't actually gone to according to plan in your mind and in your heart and there's definitely a kind of acceptance and a and um a stoicism about that situation by the time you get to april and i feel that it also gives you a chance to move ahead quite significantly in your life by the time you come to may uh it you really have a chance to kind of flourish in your life and to to begin things new to be able to plan ahead to be able to move ahead in the direction which you've planned and to be able to make quite a steady progress in that direction so it feels very much about you uh, coming into your own whereas previously in the first few months of the year you were trying to come out into your own and working towards that but there was very much a feeling of there being um others to consider during that time but here it's like you're coming out on your own and you really are confident about who you are and it's almost like you have something to show the world it's almost like you have a point to prove you have something to show and it's something that needs to be done in order for you to be able to make some progress in your own life and in your own direction in terms of your own soul i think i ever that um you might want to not move as fast or not trust people so much i mean like it's always important to trust but the warning here is about not rushing into something so if you are starting a business at this point and you are coming out into your own and you're finally feeling like you know you can you can do this and there have been people in your past perhaps your mum or your partner you know hadn't really encouraged you taking away from you rather than helping you and supporting you i feel here that you are going to come into a state where you are able to move ahead and start that business and do whatever it is that you need and but i would say that um you need to not go into a partnership with somebody very shortly thereafter you need to be very wary of entering into a partnership uh, you need to be wary of trying to set something up too soon so if you just started a business you don't necessarily want to buy a property to run that business from immediately it would not be a good idea it would deplete you if you did that um the other kind of things here if you went setting up a business if you were just coming out in terms of your own in terms of sport or in terms of your hobbies or or um a certain kind of um something that you want to do for yourself i would say that here is it's not a time to come and invest in something that was that is going to take quite a lot of money so if you've just begun to surf then i wouldn't say go ahead and buy a surfboard necessarily not just yet now is not the right time okay and um i would say take it slow basically okay uh with whatever it is that you're excited about that you're feeling you're feeling free you're feeling like you've come out of that uh, burning house so where you're now in a space where you are doing better now you might be looking on, in on somebody else's home and thinking okay well you know they're doing really well and i want to be like that or look at that business it's flourishing i want to also have my own property and flourish and that's fine to provide you with inspiration but it's the the advice here is not to rush with that it's it can be but don't don't rush into it right now and i feel here that uh with these this whole set of experiences that you've had here from the beginning of the year right into june what's going to happen is that you're going to feel like uh a, the a life force is returning to you that you might have not had for a long time this sun here which is reversed is actually 
the card which shows that your life force has been it's not as as strong as it usually is and so i think that um that could be i'm getting such a strong vibe that this could be from a relationship but if it's not then uh please bear with me and and just understand that i'm reading for a whole lot of people here i would say that if you're not coming out of um, a relationship as such there would have been people around you or situations that are around you which the way in which you have interacted with that has caused you to feel suppressed or oppressed in some way and not actually be able to speak your truth or, or speak your speak your mind about something and then here it feels like you're able to come out with whatever it is that you needed to say or do and just go ahead and do it and you will have other people speaking about it and but you don't need to take into account what they say it doesn't need to bother you but having said that uh taking this course of action you know um just walking away from things that don't work for you anymore, cutting off relationships that don't work anymore, um, summoning your strength, finding your your son again. You're going to find that you uh, are breathing back into your life the life force that you might have left and you're becoming more clear about um, about what's been going on in your life. So you might have experienced a kind of brain fog in the first few months of the year, but then around June, you're going to be very clear about the direction you're headed into about what you want for your life about um what is what what works for you what doesn't work for you and you're you're really at at a point where you are in recovery i would say and so here we have uh july august and september okay so for Ju july august and september what i see here is that as you've been regaining your life force here and you've come out into your own you're quite clear about what it is that you want and what you don't want. And here where you might have not been sure about what you wanted to do previously, you are now very clear about what you want to do. And it's it's time to, to take action as to what you want to do. You're no longer sitting on the fence about what it is that you need to do and what you don't need to do. You can go right ahead and take action. And I feel that that is the energy that you begin July with and you move into August with I feel also here instead of walking away from a situation or um, removing yourself from a specific situation there is a, need, uh, a requirement here to to stay behind and look into it and to, to find more information about a given situation to understand to perhaps interview people around you to hear what they have to say about certain things and I feel that there is going to be a real uh, breakthrough as far as that is concerned and that you can find this kind of energy at the end of July beginning of August and then I feel that um, the other kind of thing that could happen is I would say do that but don't get too bogged down on it because what it could lead to is a a slowing down of your momentum that you've started off here in May and uh, or in the end of April and the beginning of May, you had begun with a particular momentum and you were moving forth. But there could be a sense that you are, you kind of lose your momentum in a way and you aren't able to ride forth in the way that you, um, you wanted to or you thought you could. And I think that the, there's a set of circumstances that start happening in, in July and August, which make you slow down a lot. But I, I think you're not, need not to give in to that largely because you've come from a space where you've had your your life force being depleted from you already you've had to make that sacrifice and here this is not about your life force being depleted but it's almost like it's the almost like the precursor to that so i think that you need to just make your plans and be steady and slow about going about doing whatever you need to do you need to put a lot of thought into what you need to do but you don't need to suffer the the negative aspects of that, which is, me, which is maybe you know, sleeping many hours, too many hours, or um, not being motivated enough to get going, not m being able to move as you need to. And I think that here you need to just be aware of that as you approach end of August, beginning of September. I think, however, that having said that, you are still enjoying that clarity of mind that you've had previously. But I think that you need to be cautious about not allowing that to take, have the better of you. So not getting getting too far with it or not being too controlling, perhaps not being too authoritarian in a way, but being able to manage that all within your bounds. So I think that what happens 
really from July, August and September is, is that you are quite clear about what you want. You are going to take action. You're going to gather more information and you're going to make sure that you keep your momentum going as well as ensure that you're not too overpowering in a particular way that is controlling or being authoritative or being um, micromanaging in a way, like an employer that's um, sort of micromanaging or being somebody that's breathing down quite heavily of someone else. So I think that um, I think the reason to do these readings is just to kind of understand what kind of energies we'll be faced with at that time of the year and then to be able to prepare for that. And so I feel that that's, this card, these cards are very much telling you about what it is that you need to prepare for. So then we have the last part of the year, which is October, November, December. So as we come towards the end of the year, I feel that there's quite a lot to be celebrated. But at the same time, you might find that uh, whatever venture that you began here hasn't necessarily taken off in the way that you've wanted it to from a monetary perspective. If it is a business that you're starting off, perhaps year you've decided in, in May or April, May that you want to have a baby and... Um, and then you haven't actually gotten pregnant by the time you get to October and you're feeling it could be that you feel a bit down about it. But basically, I would say that as you enter October, you shouldn't be too worried if things have been delayed. OK, you shouldn't be too worried about things not necessarily being as you're not being as productive as you need to do or you're not being as fertile as you thought you would be or you're not um able to earn as much money as you expected to at a given moment. And so I think don't worry about that because as you come into November and as you move into that energy from October, November, December, you're going to find yourself very happy. You know, you're going to be celebrating. It could be that you feel completely satiated in your life. You're rejoicing in what is there and what um, this experience is. And I feel that you have a lot to be happy for. And perhaps you're looking back at how you succeeded um, at this point and how you came into your own into in, in the second quarter and and how you were able to manage all those challenges that you that you experienced as well as you how you gained your clarity back in um in the previous um three months and then you're sitting here in October and you might be thinking oh well why aren't things moving along faster I think you don't need to worry about that because you're going to be really really rejoicing over everything else that you have achieved I think also there's a sense that you, there's a requirement or a need to do things differently um, so there's a need to take things in a different direction to do things maybe differently from from the way that others have done it and the first thing that comes to mind here because this is a kind of wedding is that perhaps you take your honeymoon before you have your wedding. And, and uh, you know, it's something that you decide to do that isn't actually traditional, but going somehow against traditional values. And that is all fine as long as you are happy with it and you are looking after yourself in that process. There's a way in which as we come towards the end of the year that uh, you could be thinking a lot about what you desire, about fantasizing about it, and um, perhaps trying to visualize, trying to manifest something. But it could be that it you kind of fall into a pattern of doing it where it offers you a great deal of comfort. And so you don't really want to step out in the world and be present because being in your fantasy world or being away is has taken up so much of your time. Now, I want to relate this card back to this because if I had to sit be, before someone and do a reading for them, I would say to them that this, you're feeling this way and you're experiencing this because you're still healing from a breakup that you've had here. Um, or because, you know, so maybe it's not a breakup. Maybe it was just something that didn't ever realize. But this is something that you, um, you're still healing. You know, I feel like this card is still healing some of what happened there. And so I don't think that you need to be hard on yourself if you find yourself drifting, drifting off into daydreams and um, you you prefer to spend time in day, daydreams. I think it's just a kind of way of healing yourself or working with yourself. I just want to draw a final card um, for clarity for that last card, but also just to see how the year will end. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So we have the world card and uh, this card, I think it was coming out in a reverse, but I want to, I'm going to leave it like this and I will 
read for you um, um, from both perspectives. So I feel here that, um, uh, you know, there's this card of this baby being born. So um, if you are, you know, here you've decided you're going to go ahead and have a baby, perhaps by yourself or without or with someone of um but you've decided just to go ahead and do that and you do it here in an unconventional way then there is a chance that um that you could be preg pregnant you know if you've been waiting to become pregnant um there's a lot of baby imagery here as well there's one here um there's you know there's yeah so i think that um it's something that you you ultimately you get what you want ultimately it's full circle. It's a closed circle. Things come together. You see the manifestation of what it is that you wanted in the world. And if it is reversed, you it just takes a little bit longer. But it doesn't the the meaning of the world card doesn't change for this. And I don't feel that intuitively either. I feel that here as you come into this time where you're daydreaming uh quite a lot or taking, you know, maybe um, taking a bit more time away from society in a way that you are actually going to be rewarded ultimately by things coming to fruition you know here the, it could also be there's this marriage card there's this baby card you could also be having a baby out of wedlock here because you have the higher fent that's reversed um, but those are the more obvious um, kind of interpretations of it I would say that if you are, if you receive this card, that I feel like you, whatever you've begun the year with, which are really powerful cards, because you have the devil reversed, you have the lovers reversed, you have strength reversed, and you have the sun reversed, you have four major arcana cards here, that are quite a lot of energy that you're working with. Well, you can say that by the time you come to the end of the year, you would have closed that. You would have done that healing that was necessary. You would have summoned that strength. You would have been able to come out into your own. You would be able to regain your life force. You would be able to take the decisions that you need to take uh, and restrain yourself where you need to restrain yourself. And here you are able to experience the joy of having made your decisions, of having gone through these experiences and um, and choosing to do things your way and uh and yeah and you have the completion of it so i think it's a wonderful way to end the year in any case i wish you all a fabulous 2023 i hope this reading has helped you and has helped you um understand what is coming your way and also uh, helps warn you so that you can be prepared for whatever it is that's happening out there i feel that some of these cards here are quite um quite severe and it doesn't necessarily mean that you'll have a severe time um it could mean that you just have an ounce of this you know it might be that you just feel like this one day in the whole that whole term um and but it's encapsulated and sometimes these cards can come across in quite um you know it's is the tarot there can be quite harsh imagery but i think that you don't need to be concerned about that and uh, you just have to take things in your stride and i I feel that the, this year is going to be a really important year for you in terms of uh, moving ahead, making decisions um, and, and really summoning your own strength to be able to uh, do things your way. And, um, and you're going to see that it's all going to be fine at the end of it. And you have not just that, but also the a card of absolute satisfaction, joy and completion, contentment here um, at, as you enter this third uh, the the fourth quarter of the year or the last three months of the year all right wishing you a very blessed 2023 and blessings abound from kismet rising and for those of you who've chosen the option number three we're using the deck called el nuevo tarot de las hadas and we're asking what is it that we need to know for 2023 what do we need to know generally and what do we need to be warned of and what is our advice for what we will encounter in 
So for the months of January, February and March, we have the Nine of Wands, we have the Nine of Swords, we have the Seven of Chalices, and we have the Four of Chalices. So I feel that this year is going to start off with you really kind of being more cautious as you move along, being quite careful as to the directions that you take, and almost waiting, um, in or being or anticipating rather, for s something to happen. It's like you playing your cards. Um, you you're playing your cards quite close to your chest. You're really quite cautious about what it is that will come. I feel that um, this can lead you to actually feeling attacked in some way, or feeling. Um, undermined in some way or feeling almost victimized even and uh, I think that uh, very much of something that's going on in your mind and you could actually work towards removing some of this apprehension that you have around you so that you don't experience this so severely I think that you're healing from this or you're moving away from it as we progress into February, March, and some of this energy is also in January, you're going to find that you are resorting to kind of imagining what the future could be like or imagining how you could overcome a particular situation, viewing yourself as um, more powerful so that you can overcome this. It's almost like you are reviewing different scenarios in your mind to be able to resort to some kind of um, healing for yourself. It's almost like you are working in a way to distract yourself from something that is kind of per not persecuting you, but kind of, kind of, it feels quite harsh, actually. I feel that whatever it is, is just in your, in your mind, though. I don't feel and see anyone else here that's actually hurting you. And I feel that you could have someone be the victim of you uh, rather than you be the victim of someone else. So I think that a lot of it appears, I know I'm reading for quite a lot of people here, but it appears that this is unfounded, this kind of worry that you have, these concerns that you have that might be a bit obsessive, that might take over your mind. Uh, if you are worried about something quite severely in the first three months of the year, I would say just take a step back and see if it truly is something that is hurting you, something that you can't overcome. Because I feel here that you could overcome this with a bit of visualization, with a bit of daydreaming, with a bit of fantasy about how things could actually be. Okay. And I feel here that um, by the time you come to the end of, of these three months, so January, February, March, by the time you come to, to March, I feel that you're going to be feeling quite safe that you're going to be feeling quite supported and that you're going to be to have overcome whatever was you were concerned about in the first part of this year and you're going to find that you you're feeling quite relaxed actually and that you've come to quite a good place it might be that you feel quite satiated but it also could be that you are bored enough you are released enough to be able to just enjoy rather than to be worried about something. And let me cl uh, clarify what I mean by that. So previously, your attention, you were in full alert. You were, you know, you were quite attentive to what could be happening. And you were quite um, embroiled in what what this made you feel like. And then you were still quite embroiled, but on how to overcome all of that. And it feels like by the time you come to March, in the end of March, you're actually quite relaxed. You have overcome whatever you've been going through, whatever has been in your mind, whatever you've been actually acutely aware of and concerned about. And you have uh, kind of arrived at a, at a pretty good position here. You are seated in a swing over something and you look quite relaxed and quite um, at peace with yourself. And so this is the, the, yeah, the symbolism of this card. I feel that um, it's there's nothing really to be concerned about uh, as you come to the end of um, those three months, January, February and March. So then we move on to April and May and June. 
and we have the ten of swords we have the strength card and we have the ace of wands and the three of chal chalices or cups in april you might be feeling quite done over again you might be feeling quite frazzled it might be that you feel quite overwhelmed or like you have nothing more left to give you might be very busy actually it might just be that you have a lot of responsibilities and you are very busy or it could be that you feel like you're at the end of your tether in a way but before that you've had a bit of a reprieve here so i feel that this is not as severe as it normally would be it's just kind of dealing with whatever was residual that you were worried about that you started the year off with and it quickly changes because by the time you come to the end of April and the beginning of May, you have an, a strength here that is kind of quite overpowering in a way. And it's, it's, it's just wiped out that other energy that was there previously. And you are on a new path. You've carved yourself a new path. You found yourself on a new path and you are moving ahead. And you have the Ace of Wands here to confirm that, to show that you have the the energy, the life force, the 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 drive, the stamina to be able to just grow forth and be yourself and do whatever it is that you need to do. You might decide to set up something new, to begin a new project, to begin um, a new form of sport. You might decide to uh, start up your own business. And I think that you could move quite quickly in this time. So May, June is a time for you to really flourish and and coming to your own and um i think that it could be really like a new beginning for you actually during this time here it's certainly the start of new energy coming to your life and it's like the strength card has kind of forced you through the situation but i feel that whatever it is here that has been getting to you it's something that you quite easily are able to overcome you know because you have the tools already to be able to work with that and and you know how to look after yourself emotionally. And I feel that just here, it wasn't difficult for you to kind of summon the strength that you have here when you've had this uh, concern or this worry where you felt frazzled, where you felt that, like you couldn't defend yourself any longer. And you were quite easily able to spring forth from that and then just be able to start anew. And you shortly thereafter are able to celebrate having started anew. You're able to come together perhaps with friends or with others who are supportive of you, who are part of your cabal and they are here to help you come together and, and celebrate what it is that you have right here. And that's just wonderful. And then we have, as we move on to July, August and September, we have even better cards because we are looking here, you have the Queen of Swords, you have the Magician, you have the Devil, And you have the nine of chalices. So for July, August and September, we have quite a lot of clarity. We have quite a lot of um, strength and, and power actually moving forward. You have the compassion that is required to understand situations and to be able to, to relate to others. But you also have a strength and a power and a clarity of mind that you're able to bring forth and to be able to power through okay and you're able to command respect with that and I feel that that's going to set off a whole new set of experiences for you because with that kind of energy that you've started off here with the strength that you were able to have and the new beginnings and the celebration you have also here the queen of swords you're still on a, on a quite a, a, a good role so you you're in a time period of of good luck and and well-being and a lot of prosperity and a lot of goodness coming towards you yeah good, goodness that you could use you know and so you have here the the card of the magician which is basically a card suggesting that you at a point where you can attract whatever you want to in your life and you have all that you need to be able to attract that. You have the tools that are necessary to be able to attract that. You're able to manifest whatever it is that you desire in whichever way that you like. So I would say that around July, August, be very careful about what it is that you're manifesting. Be quite clear about what it is that you want. Um, and um, yeah, and then you will get what you want because you have this power, you know, this power of attraction, it's called. And, and But not just the power of attraction, but the power to wield whatever it is that you need to 
in order to get what you want or to be able to propel your life in a particular way in order to achieve what it is that you desire. And then you have the uh, the card of the devil here, which refers to a kind of excess. And I feel here what happens is that this card is just here, I think, to tell you to that you need to pull in the rain, to rein in because you need to bring in the balance because you've been riding on quite a lot of good energy here and sometimes that can get to a person's head it could manifest itself in in quite a lot of excess and too much basically of indulgence so you have here all the energy that you need to to be able to manifest anything that you like and then very often that is followed with a kind of devil energy and by that i mean it's almost like you're getting drunk on this uh, on this good energy that you have on everything that's working out in your on your order and I feel that this is just here to kind of say okay well just rein it in just be more aware just embody more of this clarity energy that you've had the, the previous month and knowing what it is that you need to know and where you need to go to in order to maintain your perspective and to keep the balance and regardless of that you know i don't think the signal is anything negative but you have the card of nine of cups or nine of chalices here which is really saying to you that you can actually just wish for anything that you want at this moment and it will come true because this is a card of have of being able to wish for something and for it to come true it's also a card of rejoicing satiated being completely at one with all your desires and all your wants and um it's something that is a very, very nice card to have in a reading so i think that here there's quite a lot of potential for your third quarter of the year to be a really productive year a year where you can wield quite a lot of power where you can make big changes where you can manifest whatever it is that you want and where you are able to manage that as well because you have the queen of swords here and she is one who manages and so you have that innately in you or that is innately in you at this particular time so let's see what the second half of the year brings i mean the third half of the year well the last part the last quarter of the year is what i meant so we have the hermit the fool the moon and we have five of pentacles so this is also kind of quite a, a lot of energy here towards the end of the year i feel like a lot of that energy started off here when you got the the strength but i think here that you're coming out from quite a high here where you're just really enjoying everything and i think as you come to uh, october november december there's a kind of need to go inward there's a need to be quiet and um to just be able to retreat into yourself and to understand some of what has been going on to kind of reevaluate to take in what has been happening in your life and where you've come from where you're headed to to be able to redefine your place to be able to find where it is that you are and where it is that you want to go to you know sometimes with this kind of energy here where you've had all this happening and this here you can actually kind of lose your way a little bit and the the hermit is there for you to kind of rein in yourself and to be able to redefine where you're headed to and it's followed directly by the fool so i feel like you'll be redefining your path and you're going to be less severe or less um uh, calculated in in your decisions as you go ahead in october november and you're going to be leaving things more to fate and uh, being more spontaneous being a little bit more um le well little less rather reserved in your um in your approach to things uh, being led more by emotion being um being yeah being led a little bit more by emotion so i think that here this kind of i feel like a lot of what you're going to be thinking about here has something to do with what you experienced in the first part of the year and if we go back and we look at that here we see that here you've had some concerns about how things are unravel unraveling in your life and here you have you know some concerns and worries about about how you're being affected by what is going on in your life 
and yeah, you are dreaming again. And I feel like this kind of energy of the moon, uh, followed by, I mean, with uh, following the fool, is it's, is a throwback to this here. Yeah. Um, it's about thinking deeply, and it's I think it's, think it's something that can actually cause you to, to, to contemplate things not just on the positive side but also on the negative side. Here, I feel that well, October, November, December is going to be a time where you. Uh, go inward where you're thinking quite deeply about where you've come from where you're headed to I think you're going to come out of that energy feeling quite quite alive and quite open to new experiences and being able to just go forth and enjoy with your wind in the hair I'm um, sorry your hair in the wind <laughs> and just being able to flourish with that and it's really a time of flourishing and, and looking at how else you could do things. So if you were setting up a business here and this was, you know, about you having made gains in your business and you working for moving forth and um, and deciding, OK, what do I need to do? This is more like a review. And then you decide to open a different branch or go in a slightly different direction in your business. And you're doing so also against the the consensus, the, the general consensus. So I think that but you but you, you're doing it based on emotion and intuition and um and just having faith in that and if it's something that you know you you were thinking of uh of starting off in a new direction perhaps moving to a new place i feel that here after you've enjoyed certain things you you're, you're thinking about how it is that you could um uh whether you've made the right decision and whether it, you can actually do something different uh, like perhaps um leave your current job and go off in a different direction or perhaps redesign your apartment or perhaps just go off and travel for a while the fool is a card which doesn't restrict you in any way and doesn't hold you back in any way you're able to do whatever it is that you want to do you're able to make mistakes if you need to make mistakes and you are not judgmental about yourself at all here you're not thinking that much about the consequences you're not held back or restrained by things and um, here we have the moon, uh, which is also talking about you going quite deep within yourself and thinking deeper. You're not just contemplating or reflecting upon what's happened. You're going in deeper and thinking about your experiences, about how, what led you to become this type of person and how have you become this person. And I feel here that it's really also a time for me, uh, the way I'm reading it, these two cards here is that there's going to be a lot of introspection. There's going to be a lot of inward um, feelings. There's going to be a lot of closing down almost for the winter if you are in the northern hemisphere. And if you are in the southern hemisphere and and you're going to be experiencing this, this is quite contrary to the energies of spring and, and summer. It's quite um, it, it's quite a, an energy where you want to hold back rather than fling open the curtains and uh, let the sun shine in. So I would I would expect that a lot of people we have chosen this option are from the northern hemisphere do let me know if you're from the southern hemisphere yeah and the five pentacles it follows it and there's a bit of concern here um perhaps about money or perhaps there's not a concern but rather a holding back of of uh, money just you know being a bit more tight with your purse uh just um holding your your funds quite tightly at this moment and um uh, being quite conservative is the right word to use uh, with the with your with your money at this moment i feel that um, you have something to protect and um, you're going to do so at least you have something that you feel that others might want and that you need to protect and that is something that you you need to do you need to protect what you have i'm just going to ask for a clarifier for the last card we have the four of ones here so i feel that regardless of this kind of energy here ideas that you have about money that's not the only energy that you're going to be having during this time you're also going to be enjoying the the the, the relationships that you have you're going to be enjoying a, it's going to be a time a celebratory time a time of enjoyment and fun and uh, laughter just um a lot of uh, coming together that will really and help you enjoy more and help you truly celebrate the 
different phases that you've been through in the year and all this wonderful energy that has come your way and that you've been able to partake of it's definitely you're definitely ending the year on a celebratory note and i think that you don't need to be worried about you know a financial concerns during this time but just to protect yourself from what you have because there is something here that it's almost as if you you don't really mind that something here is it's watching what you have there's definitely an energy here of being watched and being noticed your progress is being noticed and um, as you as soon as you are aware of that you want to protect it but regardless you're still having fun you're still celebrating um this is a card where it sometimes talks about having a wedding um it can be a card where you are building a house and you are setting up a new venture you could be perhaps um setting up a, the the premises of a new business or for your work yes and so this is what the year 2023 has to offer i feel that you will start the year on a, on quite an emotional note and you will progress into quite a quite a lot of dynamism and uh, joy and laughter and happiness pure happiness here and uh, and really just being able to create anything that you want to with clarity that is needed and as you head into the latter part of the year you are being more reflective and contemplative but there's still a celebration and there's still um, the freedom to do whatever it is that you desire so i hope that has been a helpful reading for you and i'm wishing you a very blessed 2023 blessings abound from kismet rising and for those of you who've chosen the third option which is the mystical tarot we're asking the question what can we expect in 2023 we're doing a general reading in which we are looking at what we can expect what we should be warned of and what is the guidance for the year ahead And so the way we're doing this reading is that we're looking at the four quarters in the year. So we're looking at January, February and March, April, May and June, July, August and September, October, November and December. So let's see what the first three months of the year have to offer us. So we have the Queen of Pentacles. We have the High Priestess, Three of Swords, and the Devil Reversed. So the way in which I'd interpret these cards is that you may start the year off on a note where you are needing to rein in yourself. You may need to rein in certain excesses that you would have. You might be feeling a little bit constricted in terms of your financial affairs or not as abundant as you usually feel. It could be that you feel a little bit like there's a cloud that's come over you in terms of your financial well-being. I feel like this time as we enter the year it's almost like a feeling like you need to finish some projects or you need to finish some things you need to be able to perhaps create a new form of income for yourself perhaps you need to look at how you can further a business that you have or further your studies or further a project that you have or probably not your studies but probably it probably has something to do with a project a project or your business or your career in some way you feel like you need to update it you need to make it more modern perhaps or you need to make it not necessarily more modern but something that is more attractive and i feel here that this leads you to looking inward and and um finding out what is the reason that you are not able to uh or you haven't been able to proceed in this way uh, or why you feel blocked for some of you you might be working in the healing world um in the esoteric world where you might be experiencing some kind of lack in terms of your work um you might be experiencing some kind of lack in terms of the spiritual power that you have uh or the energetic power that you have i should say or you could be experiencing a kind of slowing down in your business 
regardless it's still a very good time because I feel that you still have everything you need right here and that you won't be in any kind of situation where you will be in some kind of deep struggle or in, in dire straits. So to say, I think as you go into the second half of January and the beginning of February, you're going to find that you have the opportunity to go deeper inward, that you're able to access certain realms and cert work with certain entities perhaps, or you're able to work more dynamically in a healing capacity. If you don't work in the healing world and you you perhaps just do anything else, I feel like the the month at the end of January, at the beginning of February, you will find that you're able to make progress in terms of your own spirituality and really be able to connect in a way that you haven't necessarily been able to connect previously. I think that this leads to opportunity to be able to heal certain heartbreaks that you've had in the past. There's not just the feeling of being able to heal certain heartbreaks, but being able to heal certain relationships that you've had in the past where the situation might have left the other party having a bad taste and um, you might feel the same. You might feel a bit heartbroken by it, but I feel that there's a chance to resolve that, there's a chance to heal that and uh, there is a chance to to understand why these things happened and why why it had to happen. I feel that there's some kind of reckoning in terms of where you feel really at one with yourself, where you have reckoned with your past and the decisions that were made previously, which led you to be a certain way, to manage things in a certain way, to manage also your finances in a certain way. And as you come into February, you're going to be finding that you're able to work with this. You're able to have a lot more courage. You're able to forgive more easily. You might be able to uh, talk to the people um, that you've had these relations in with in the past and and settle some scores or just be able to uh, overcome things and, and just be able to move on from that. I think there's a resolution of um, that here. I think also that as you enter March, you're going to find that you feel a lot more dif uh, disciplined. You're able to manage some of your perhaps... Um, anxiety is better you may, may be able to manage some of your addictions better like if you spend way too much of time on social media you'll be able to rein that in a little bit you'll be able to um if you've been you know you go to food for it as a source of comfort you'll be able to manage that better if you spend way too much time on netflix or watching movies you're going to be able to to work with that and just kind of contract that a little bit so that it's not taking over your life. You have a handle on it. You can control the excesses that you have in your life. You are in balance. You're able to manage that. You, you. It's not gluttonous. It's more. It can be hedonous, but it's not gluttonous. And so you're able to to like have a good balancing act as far as what your entertainment, where your entertainment is concerned, where excesses are concerned in terms of food or alcohol, drink, uh, drugs, um, perhaps anything that you can be addicted to. Okay, so I feel that here you you have quite a nice start to the year. And I feel that regardless of whatever the um, situation is where you might be feeling a little less um, abundant than you usually do, this is something that you can easily overcome. And it's truly not really uh, um, the feeling is not an actual or an accurate description of what you have all right so that is January February and March and then if we look at what's coming in April May and June so as we enter April May and June we have some quite interesting cards here we have the king of swords reversed we have the king of wands reversed we have the ace of pentacles reversed and we have the star which is reversed so i feel that these months in april may and june might be a challenge for you to be able to manage your authority over certain aspects of your life you might find it difficult to manage your your drive over in certain parts of your life so you might find that you're a little bit um zealous overzealous or you might find that you are a little bit um you're not as driven as you normally would be and i feel here uh, in april and and in may you might be be feeling like you have a lot too much of power in a way or not enough power so you're not able to assert your power use your power 
in a way that is uh, perhaps appropriate or balanced as far as you are concerned. So there's a feeling here of going overboard a little bit, maybe being a little bit too critical or maybe not being able to speak up when you need to be critical. And um, it can work both ways, you know. So you have to just see what you are prone to doing and what you are, what is your behavior like. And um, and you can expect that to happen so that, well, you don't have to expect it, but you can be aware that it could happen. And then you can allow yourself to overcome that by being prepared for, for it. And so I think here, uh, perhaps um, you're a bit too authoritative, you're a bit too controlling, or perhaps you're not, you lose control, or you're not able to manage your control, you're not able to manage your team, you may be a little bit foggy in the mind, you just don't feel like you can uh, be, um, you're not at the usual level of clarity that you have. The king of wands here is as a card where you might, you might have lost your drive, you might have lost your motivation, or you might be a little bit too motivated where you don't allow balance to come into your life and you don't allow the equal measures of uh, of everything that you need in your life. Uh, the King of Wands is also someone who started to lack faith in what they're doing and the path that they're on and um, they start to kind of lose interest in something and so that could be something that you have when you are in in April or May. It could be that you want to do things right, but you find it difficult to do so. It could be that you are in a space, physically, geographically, I mean, where you are not able to achieve as much as you would be normally because of the circumstances, because of the people there, um, because of a whole range of things. So I would say you need to look out for that. There's also this energy coming in in May here where there is um, kind of a new beginning that's been delayed by some, for some reason. So there's a new beginning in terms of perhaps creating a new source of income or perhaps setting up uh, your own venture, a new business, or with regard to a project or putting forth a proposal. And there's um, something like a missed deadline or an inability to get the project through at a certain time, or things just not starting in the way that they need to uh, be started. There's some kind of delay that's experienced. And it's all related in a way. It's related to these kind of emotions that you have here and um, the an inability for the king to manage themselves in the way that they would normally and for them to manage their subjects so I think here this is kind of like what follows from that and I don't think it's particularly um, negative or anything I think that it's what it's showing is that there is an opportunity but there is a delay or that it kind of is just around the corner or that something that needs to be done to overcome that okay and so you can meditate and and overcome all of these things, by the way, this is not written in stone in any way. And this is just an idea of what will come or what is to be expected. And then I see you end off um, between uh, April, May and June. In June, you have this, there's a sense here of, um, of hope. Okay, there's this hope, there's this idea of, of wishing for something, but that's something that you're wishing for feels quite far away, or it, it almost feels as if it's, you're not able to reach it that easily. Or you might be starting to lose hope as a result of you thinking on some level or you believing rather on some level that it is um, it's not possible or that it's too difficult. So these are the kind of things to look out for in those months. And I think that if you can, you know, just keep your hope alive and fresh and if you can um, kind of manage these energies here where you are uh, not overzealous, not um, losing your motivation, just keeping yourself calm and balanced and moving through that, um, then you will you will find yourself at the end of May with a vibrant hope and it with, with opportunities that are overflowing at the end of May and June. Okay, so here I'm just going to look at July, August and September. So as you fall on from June into July, August and September, you're dealing with some of the same energies that you have here in in the previous months. You have once again uh, reversed. You have the um, Knight of Wands and the Knight of Pentacles. And so I feel here that there has been progress made from the previous months where you've had this reversed pentacle. 
Uh, you still have a reverse pentacle, but there's been forward movement. There's been steady progress. Perhaps the progress has, has been steady, but not as stable. Or perhaps it's been a bit wonky, but there has been some progress. There's also a sense of um, making progress in terms of the the energy that you want to move forth with. Now, I think that in contrast to the King of Wands, who can often be quite stodgy in a way, or a bit too laid back for a King of Wands, um, the reversed King of Wands, you might add uh, the reversed Knight of Wands could be somebody who's moving ahead at a ridiculous speed and could be doing things in a fashion that is uncontrollable, but making headway nevertheless. And um, having said that, there is there it needs to be balanced. It needs to be uh, worked on in order to be managed better so that you don't run out of your fuel too soon and hear that you know you're not too slow in terms of what you need to do as far as um, the financial aspects are concerned as far as the material aspects are concerned this is also a card which can talk about both of these pentacles that are reverse can also talk about health your health in a certain way in which there needs to be something to be looked after or taken care of or you might be neglecting something here and or that you might have had the signs for it there and here you are neglecting it instead of actually taking action to do something about uh, this is like July and August and as you come to the end of August what you're going to find is that you're going to need to make a decision about which way you're going to go into and I feel that this is a decision that you know you you have to make and you should not avoid making that decision you should actually just go ahead and make that decision because if you do that's going to balance out what's coming next because then you have here the chariot and the chariot is really it's reversed but you are not managing to man manage both these energies here like you have these two energies with the swords and the wands and you have it here with the wands and the um the pentacle and uh, you here you you have a situation where you're not able to to manage it so well it's like you you know instead of being torn in one in two directions uh, and but moving ahead still the chariot here is probably just moving in one direction so there's, it's almost like you're in competition with yourself to be able to prove yourself in some particular way and, and then you are moving only and, and furthering one particular cause but you need to be furthering another cause as well. So for instance, you need to be managing your admin as uh, alongside the creative aspect of your work. You need to be managing um, at, um, and bureaucratic matters um, as efficiently as, as you manage your perhaps your relationship so i think that here you are going to find that you you are going to be drawn in different directions but you can make the decision as to how to balance it and which direction you are going to go in and then you'll be able to to perhaps make sure that it won't get out of hand in some way i feel also here that um this this knight of wand it's, it's some somebody who really um, wants to make great headway in the world it's somebody who's very motivated it's somebody that really wants to do the right things for uh, but they perhaps are making the wrong decisions in terms of moving ahead and, and and doing what they need to do perhaps here in this kind of context with these cards there's a need to just look back at why you're motivated to do a particular thing and what's the reason for it and ultimately how will it influence and impact others around you as well all right so i think that is um one of the things that need to be done in the in those months of july august and september all right so in october november and december what we have here is your control you've taken control you're managing things well you have your finger on the ball <laughs> literally and you are able to um take decisions which are going to be uh look good for you not just in the short term but in the long term you have vision you have an ability to manage your all these things here that you were struggling with and here you're able to to manage this okay you're able to come out of this kind of state of um inertia uh and you're able to to bring things forward you have here as well 
this sense of riding towards your victory, but it could be um, that you're not necessarily recognized for that. You There is progress being made. There, there is victory. There is um, headway being made, but it might be that it's a little bit, comes a little bit late, um, later than you expect, or it could be that you're just not necessarily recognized for it. You might have made like a huge effort to do something and instead of people celebrating you and really cheering you on, you don't necessarily have that. But that's not necessarily a negative thing. That's something that is, it's just part of the course. It's just, you know, what are your expectations? Uh, if you manage your expectations, you will find that you you won't really, um, yeah, you won't really have a problem with that. And I think here that, you know, it's followed by the Nine of Cups, which is reversed, which is a card that can't, it doesn't really have a negative connotation when it's reversed. It's not the opposite. It's not the shadow of it. So you have here the Nine of Cups and it's a card for what do you wish for? What do you want f f at this moment? And what do you hope for? So I feel like as you come to the year's end, you're ending off on quite a good note. You have your perspectives um, worked out. You have your vision worked out. You are able to have victories. They might be small, but they may be many. You might be, have, um, you you will have what you wish for. You'll be feeling quite, quite content. You might have everything that you wish for, but it might be that you don't recognize it. So that's something to take note of. And, uh, but you will have everything that you want and you will be successful here. There is this success, there's this victory. There's this confidence in your success that you have as well. And I think here that um, you end the year on the fool with a fool card and um, the fool is somebody who's spontaneous, who's able to go ahead without a care in the world, who's able to make decisions quite impulsively and act in a way that is um, not expected by people. And I think that, uh, but it is new beginning and to end the year with something that is new beginning uh, is wonderful because you are expecting something wonderful to come around the corner and a lot more adventure awaits you. But it, the card is in the reverse so you'll need to pay attention to uh, those irrational decisions that you might be making to doing things too spontaneously without care for consequences. You could uh, also make sure that you are not um, bringing yourself into disrepute. Okay, so these are things to take care of um, as you come to the end of the year. Uh, I just want to take have another card for the end of the year as I've done with the other options. And we have, it's in the reverse position, but we have here the Eight of Cups. And I think that as you come to the year's end, you will definitely be walking away from something. You'll be walking away from, I think these two cards work very nicely to each, with each other. You'll definitely be walking away, moving away from whatever you've known. And you'll be, you'll be doing it for so that you could gain more insight and more knowledge into yourself. I think that it's a card where you, it's it, there's an, a kind of note here, uh, a warning as to not do it too irrationally, not do it too impulsively and not do it for the wrong reasons. So don't do it because you're angry with someone. Do it because you truly want to do it for yourself. Don't do it because somebody's pissed you off or somebody's disappointed you or because, you know, whatever the reason is, because somebody's upset you at work or whatever. Don't just run away because of that. Don't do it because you need to do it for yourself. And that's what you're calling us. That's what your soul is calling you for. And I think also here, you know, you've started the year on quite a note, on a note where you are able to have quite a lot of power and quite a lot of, um, um, you know, um, support regarding overcoming past hurts and in, on quite an intuitive note and you might may have started the year off in debt or in uh, without being able to to necessarily um, um, manage money as well as you would have liked to that's just one interpretation of this there's so many different interpretations um, I can't talk about all of them or this will be here forever but there's that and there's being able to manage uh, your all of your 
your wants and excesses and then you end of the year year with um a quite a very secure card which is your two of wands where you are quite clear about the direction you're going into and where you're headed to you end the card with a six of wands which is a card of victory reversed so maybe it's delayed maybe they're smaller victories maybe you're just not getting the recognition but doesn't matter it's still a victory and then you have your nine of cups which is a card that's always positive and it's what you wish for and then moving on from what you've known from what you've done and moving on to something that's a lot more carefree you know these cards here and these ones are very much holding you down it's almost like holding you captive in a way and here you are moving with these knights but they are cards that um, hold you to quite a lot of responsibility and uh, you need to you know know what you're doing with the power that you have and this card here is basically saying well and all both of them actually are basically saying well you off to 2024 on a note where you just feel free you can just let go of your responsibilities and you just are able to do whatever it is that your heart asks for and desires and just make sure that you're doing it for the right reason okay so i'm going to leave it there i hope that this reading has been useful for you and that you can gain something from this please come back and listen to the different parts of it uh through the year and see how it applies to you and um yeah and good luck with all of that and uh, if you heed the the warnings of these cards um you know and uh, you, as far as the the king of uh, wands and um yeah the the knight of of wands are concerned and the knight of pentacles you're going to find that you are you are able to to make some real good headway in in your life and just maintain the um maintain yourself maintain your um your composure through the year you're able to make quite a lot of um headway and uh, you are able to rejoice in the in what you have i think it's very important i think there were a lot of negative uh, not negative but a lot of reversed cards here and you know a reverse card is just a, a click away so to say from um from an upright card and i think that if you look at things differently if you change your perspective these cards can are all upright you know if you simply look at things differently uh if you simply approach your life differently it's it's all about your attitude you know and you can actually turn these things around and also with the guidance um that you've received with this with this information that you've received today you can go ahead and meditate upon it so for instance uh, you know we we said that um you're going to you um as you come into april and um um and may you're going to be dealing with um uh where is it the um the kings yeah the king of wands reversed so you can meditate upon this card and you know and ask what is it that you need to do in order for you to um and to to make this this experience that you're going to have uh, a positive one or one that serves you and serves others as well and let it be you know where you are the experience having experience of the king of wands upright as opposed to reversed and i think that these all all of these experiences can be shifted and um and into one that is positive and it does not have to be one that is uh in the shadow all right so i wish you all a very blessed year ahead and um yeah blessings abound from kiss me rising and for those of you who've chosen the option number five we are using the book of shadows tarot uh and it's the volume two and we're asking what can we expect in 2023 what can we expect and what can we prepare for and what is the advice given
So the way in which we're doing this is that these cards represent January, February, and March. These cards represent April, May, and June. These cards represent July, August, and September. And these cards represent October, November, and December. Um, so let's go ahead. So we have the two of chalices reversed. We have the ten of pentacles uh, reversed. We have the nine of wands reversed. And we have temperance reversed. Okay. So I would say that some of you would start the year perhaps uh, feeling um, infatuated with somebody who you don't know. Somebody that's perhaps maybe somebody that you've met or maybe somebody also that you haven't met. Or it could be that you've started the year with a kind of um, a disillusionment in, in terms of love. So you might have been attracted to somebody and the latter part of 2020 too. And then you've uh, grown out of love with them or you've grown out of interest with them. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you don't love them anymore, but you're not as excited by them anymore. You know, you don't you see them in a kind of in a, in a somewhat of a different light. I feel here that as you are in in January that um your your legacy is not as important to you at this point. It's not so important to you what you leave behind or what your contribution is. It's not that that poignant for you. I think what's more important important for you is to be able to separate from that which you know and to be able to go out on your own and understand who you are at this given moment. It feels to me that somehow perhaps family obligations could become somewhat of a, a chore, if you want to call it that. Or it could be, it's not something that's enjoyed as much as you would normally. It might be that you're just kind of feeling fed up or feeling tired and um, you need to retreat for a little while. It could also be that, that none of that is, is the case for you, but you've needed but you need to take time away from your family for your own personal growth and your own personal well-being. Or, or you might have planned that you come together as a family to do something in this month of January and you find that it doesn't actually work out the way you had previously intended, perhaps late last year or at some point during last year. However, it is not negative. It's not something that is unpleasant. You still have the love of your family, you still have the love of, of your friends, you still have the, the security that you need and the well-being that you need and you still have everything that you, you need to take care of yourself and, and that is uh, quite clear here. I feel here as you continue into February and March what you are going to find is that you might be seeking something which is not necessarily um, there. You might be seeking something that is a slightly out of your reach. It might be that you have intended to do something that is spiritual or to do some kind of retreat or to do some kind of um, wellness program and it's somehow not within your reach. It's Or it's not, perhaps it is within your reach, but then you're not able to um, manifest it or, or realize it in the way in which you initially in a thought of realizing it. However, and there will be an opportunity for you to be able to retreat from your usual routine and to be able to walk away from some of the pressures of perhaps your daily life or your or some imposed pressures upon you. You, you will be relieved from that. There's a feeling of being relieved from oppression um, or from in some kind of nagging or bullying um, that might be occurring around you. So there's this separation from from that for some time. And um, this could have also, if you were being, if you're being bullied or you're being nagged, this could also have um, tampered with your family life in some way or uh, dampened things for you. All right. I, I think that as you get into March, there's a sense of being able to bring things into balance and to feel uh, a sense of of striving for that balance, to to work towards um, being moderate in the way in which you. Um, interact in your life. So it feels to me like there's almost like a kind of stepping away from the normal emotional reaction or the stress response that you would norm you might normally have and moving towards something which is a lot more tempered, 
a lot more uh, measured in your approach so that you're not allowing things to disappoint you as deeply as previously you're not allowing things to get you down as it might have before you're not getting that upset about things that you might have gotten you very upset previously and so in this way there's a kind of liberation so these two cards here it's almost like a liberation of some sort that takes place in february and march and um and there's also something else I want to say about January. It, aside from kind of being not infatuated anymore, there's a sense of um, kind of assuming that you have more than you actually um, have and perhaps maybe getting into debt or, um, or being very um, frivolous in terms of your shopping habits and perhaps um, spending more than you would normally. Now this is not a judgment but it's something that you might judge yourself by or you might tell yourself oh well I've gone a bit overboard here and this is something that it's it's not as if you won't have the funds to be able to do it. It feels more like you are giving yourself a bit of a hard time about that okay if that resonates with you here. So that's for the first quarter of the year. And so for April, May and June, what we have here as the King's, King of Swords reversed, we have the Ten of Wands reversed, we have Judgment and we have the Death card reversed. So I feel here that as you progress through the year in the months of April and May, you might find that um, you are trying to assert your authority in some kind of way. You are trying to um, assert your authority perhaps in terms of your ideas, in terms of what your thoughts are, in terms of what your opinions are, and you're trying to gain, gain some relevance as far as um, your your opinions and your thoughts. You're trying to uh, justify yourself. I feel like there might be a need to justify yourself, a need to explain yourself, and this isn't necessarily what you need to do, okay? You don't necessarily have to uh, try to justify yourself or try to prove something um, to the others because I feel like this will cause you to walk away from a situation or walk away from people who are not on the same page as you. It's like there are some people here that are around you that you're trying to express something to and trying to justify something to, trying to express your thoughts and then and they are of a certain opinion that you cannot reconcile yourself with. And so I see you leaving that situation but leaving it silently, like almost stepping away from it. So if it's a group of friends that you interact with that perhaps you've come to a misunderstanding about and this is not a misunderstanding between you in that you necessarily have a kind of they they that they're angry with you or that that you've um it's not like you've necessarily upset them in any way but this feels more like you just don't agree with them about something and it causes you to release yourself from that situation it causes you to step away from that and to do it in a silent way without making a big drama about it but without talking about it without um doing anything that is um bringing to their attention that you are moving away from them i feel also that you could be saying to yourself that you're not going to discuss this anymore or you could be saying to yourself that you're not willing to go down this path again and so it you are once again liberating yourself from this kind of thing that upsets you or uh, makes you feel not oppressed necessarily but makes you angry in some way and I feel that these two cards here was a little bit of that as well it's a bit of walking away a little bit but not necessarily in a way that you're actually leaving physically but here or maybe here there is some physical movement um, here it's more like um, like you're retreating in your heart and your mind you might be like okay I'm I'm not going to pursue this any longer I'm just going to continue with my life now and not let anything else get in the way uh, of this it might not be that you um, um, take yourself out of that friends group or something like this but rather that you are simply observing that which has occurred and you wanting to have nothing to do with it and I feel that that kind of energy goes into May as well 
It might be in May as well that you decide to go away a little while without telling people about it or you decide to escape somewhat and uh, you just need some time out, okay? Um, and then as you, we come around to the end of May and into June, um, what you're going to find is that you've kind of had your limit as to all of these things, you know, and you feel like there's time to, to kind of move on, to change things. And I feel that I've started here already when you've been thinking about needing some time away or needing to walk away from things for a little while, needing to venture out on your own. There's this kind of feeling that in, you need to just kind of get a bit of space from people. And that feeling arises again in May. And I feel that, you know, as you're coming to June, you've made a decision about it now. Like here, you're just kind of testing the waters. And there, you were just trying to go into yourself and, and remove the pressure from yourself. But by the time you get to June, it's like you can't take, you refuse to take the pressure any longer and you are moving on from that situation. So some of you in this situation, and the way I look at these cards, it's almost like you might be... Um, just, you might decide that you are going to have a divorce uh, based on irreconcilable differences um, because of this kind of unhappiness and not because of this unhappiness, but because of this arguing that's taking place and this inability to kind of come to, to a place where you can experience the benefits of everything that you have as, as a family. I think that here there's this... Um, it's followed by the death card. Uh, you could also be in a situation where uh, you're wanting to start over in you or you want something to end, but you're not able to end it. You're not able to come to the end of it. You're not able to bring it to completion. And um, yeah, I'm just thinking how else would you read these um, cards here? So let me just give you some other options. Here with the uh, King of Swords, I think you could also read it uh, reversed as in not able, not being able to to be as articulate as you normally would be, not being able to be um, critical without being kind of acidic, uh, or not being able to be as as um, as compassionate as you would normally be in your criticism of something or someone, and um, that could be followed with you wanting to just step away from that because. Uh, of a kind of embarrassment that you might feel or uh, or feeling that you've gone too far with something. And I feel that that then followed on by something like you wanting to uh, just, you know, you've come to a decision about that and you're wanting to perhaps break away or wanting to uh, change yourself. But there's some kind of huge realization that takes place here at the end of May, beginning of June area time. And it's something that um, this could differ for some of you, okay? So this could still be in May for some of you. For some of you, it could be the end of June. And um, yeah, there's some kind of realization, like you're done with something. You, you're absolutely done with something. It's like you want to cut something off, I feel, but you're not able to because even if you cut it off, it's still alive, okay? So that could be something to do with family. Perhaps you've had a disagreement with your family and you, you just want to cut things off with them, but you they'll always be there and they'll always be family. So it's somehow, you know, you have that kind of contradicting emotions right there. Um, this could also be something that is, well, you've just come to a realization about something and like enough's enough. You've decided, okay, you know what? I've reached my limit as to my weight gain and I'm now going to start reducing my weight and I'm going to work towards that and I'm going to cut this away and obviously that takes time it takes uh, quite uh, you know a, a while to kind of uh, reduce your weight for instance and that death card in the reverse could be that it could be that delay in the ending of something all right so this is um, though these cards here and then as we go into July, uh, August and September, what we have here, in July, I feel here that these kind of um, arguments that you might be having here, if that applies to you, will be resolved. You're no longer in conflict. You might have needed that time away to kind of come to terms with how you feel and how you uh, have decided to, how you're gonna deal with that situation. But here, as you come into July, these conflicts kind of 
dis disintegrate. They go away. You're no longer arguing with anyone. Maybe it's because you've decided you're not going to argue with anyone here. Maybe it's because these and it's a non-issue. Okay, it's no longer an issue. The the situation's been resolved, and uh, they might. They, I don't see any warmth in terms of a reconciliation necessarily, but I do feel there's chance a chance for that. There's a chance to kind of. Um, to kind of just be normal again. There's also, as you go into uh, July and August, um, well, between July and August, there's a sense of completion. There's a sense of being able to move to, through something and to something. There's a sense of being able to get out and have some fun or there's there could also be travel involved here. You could be going somewhere. You could be experiencing something. You could be, you, it's just like you're experiencing something that you wouldn't normally experience. You're putting yourself in a different situation and this different situation necessarily wouldn't necessarily mean that you are, um, it is your space or where you need to be, but you're kind of moving through spaces and it, it doesn't necessarily, necessarily resonate with you, but it makes you feel a kind of alive in some way. You feel happy for the new experience. And I think that, um, so in July, August, it's, it's somehow you, you've come full circle, you know, and I feel that whatever you've been feeling here, this kind of disappointment and stuff that you've started the world on, this year you releasing yourself from any kind of um, oppressive thoughts or ideas or people and and then here you kind of making uh, more dis decisions to do the same well now you've come full circle you've done what you've needed to do and you actually feel I think the liberation process yeah you know, the first six months feel like a liberation process I think that's complete when you come to this point here and it's something that you can actually you can actually enjoy, you can actually enjoy the state. You are happy, you are feeling quite, um, uh, I don't know, it feels like a holiday for you. Uh, and it is in the Northern Hemisphere or even in the Southern Hemisphere, there might be people who are on holiday at this point. But it's uh, it's almost like you are, you, um, you, f you just arrived, you've arrived, you're feeling good about yourself. All right. And then as you go into August, uh, you're going to find that um, there, there is a, an, an, a sense of yourself, which is um, kind of looking back at uh, certain uh, decisions that you've made in your life, which you might regret. You might also be looking at, um, or you might have met somebody at this point, uh, and you are standing, you know, next to each other in a way, but there's a way, there's a chance that you can't really have what it is that you want. Perhaps you are, you no longer can have kids or it's no longer possible, or perhaps you live in a different, they, you live in a different country to them, uh, and they, they can be with you, but they, it's not so easy for them to be with you. And it's not easy for you to leave what you have and be with them. Perhaps they have a family or you have a family that you need to take care of. And, um, so there's a sense here that you could be meeting somebody, but that it's some, Thing, something comes in the way of you being together immediately. There's some kind of, um, it takes a some time before you can come together in a way. I feel here, uh, if you are not going to, if that's not resonant with you, then the other ways of reading this card is to say that you might have some kind of regrets as to what you, um, as to decisions that you made earlier in your life. And it could be that you are quite hard on yourself because you've made these decisions. And so, I think that when you are in this good space where things have come together really well, it's important for you to kind of maintain that for as long as you can and not allow the ego to, to come in with negative thoughts about yourself and to doubt yourself. And so I think that here, however, you it offers you the opportunity to be compassionate, not just to others, but to yourself as well, and to be um, kind and, and gentle and loving and almost like you're taking care of yourself. So to take extra care to care for yourself. I feel, however, that there's still abundance here. There's quite a lot of abundance. There's quite a lot of uh, wealth or well-being associated here. And I think that uh, you don't need to be too concerned about material things at this point. Um, you might also find, like on a very literal level, that um, your harvest has gone wrong because the empress reverse could be that your harvest has 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 failed 
for the year and it also in the northern hemisphere it's your harvest time and so you could be it could be that um the emperor reversed here is also referring to um taking matters into your own hands being perhaps being too hard perhaps um you know, if you have a bunch of workers coming down on them quite hard about maybe the harvest fail, uh, if it's something like that, or uh, something not working out, being too, taking things, you know, to, to quite a severe level and being quite serious with them and being really upset with them and not um, necessarily giving them a chance to uh, find their own way. It's not like micromanaging exactly, but it's sort of like um, just coming down heavy on them. And I feel that you need not be this person. Uh, you need not get so embroiled into the little nitty gritty of what is going on, but rather to take a step back and look at what the emperor would do. What would the emperor do in this situation? And that's going to be the answer as to what you need to do. And that's how you can um, turn these cards around. Okay. And so... Then we move into uh, October, November and December. And as you enter October, it looks like you are wanting to break away. You are wanting to take things in a different direction. You're wanting to start anew, but you're not really sure of how. You're wanting to do something really irrational that you have not done before. Something quite spontaneous, something that's out of the the blue for you and I feel here that um, the decisions that you might want to make quite impulsively in October needs to be or the end of September beginning of October needs to be reviewed you need to review that and be sure of what you are doing I feel that there's a chance to go quite to be quite wild to do things quite differently to kind of um, you know throw wind throw the caution to the wind and just kind of move on in your life and just do things uh, just let your hair down and go um, crazy for a bit and I think that there is a chance for that and you could actually um, um, and, and you know do that you could actually allow yourself to do that but I feel here that this full card could actually be uh, I feel like these cards here like when you do a reading like this the cards that you're laying down right are response to you what would have happened previously now if you you have the the empress reversed and you have the emperor reversed here and if you actually manage to work on this aspect and turn this around then this won't be relevant to you because you would have created another reality for yourself and so you know none of this is written in stone please believe that and this is just made to warn you so that you can be prepared for something and and work um on your situation but I think that this card here, the Fool reversed and Justice reversed, is a reaction to this. Because if these two energies come together, you're completely out of control and not really as grounded as you would normally be. And you might, it might lead you to making some errors in your judgment and taking action that you might later regret. Um, you, it might be that you are giving yourself a hard time here, like really beating yourself up because of certain things that you've done here or certain things that you, you've said. It might be that you're really disappointed with uh, the fact that you've had this whole wonderful experience and then things haven't actually worked out in the way that you wanted it to here, in your opinion. And so this is how, um, and this is how you react to that by uh, going a bit crazy, by taking some irrational action, by being spontaneous but impulsive and um, throwing the wind to the caution, sorry, throwing caution to the wind, <laughs> excuse me, and just being, you know, just being completely blown out of proportion here. And this is a way in which you could work with that, but it could also be that you've resolved these issues right here and you've come to terms with it. You've made some, let's use the example of having a failed harvest. So you've had that failed harvest and you've decided that instead of um, coming down on your workers, and um, what the government for insisting that you take certain measures in your farming or, you know, doing certain things um, incorrectly. Instead of that, you've decided rather, okay, let's just, this harvest failed, but what can I do to replenish my soil before I can actually begin the next one? Can I take, 
can I grow something else in the meanwhile? Can I uh, do a different, like plant something and um, now and harvest it perhaps in 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 March or something as opposed to in August? And so that fool card, in a way, would be taking an action like that. So perhaps you decided that you normally farm apples, but you've then decided to plant some tulips instead. And so your harvest time would be a bit uh, earlier and uh, it would yield a different product. Now, this could be completely irrational and could be completely out, out there. But in a way, it would be good business sense because you're trying to make um, the most of what you have uh, given the situation and uh, making hay while the sun shines, so to say. And um, this is so this is a way in which the fool can be interpreted as well. So the fool reverse is not always... Um, something who which is right out of the blue necessarily but i feel that oh, oh it's not necessarily something to be worried about i think the fool um reversed can also be something quite positive because you have that kind of feeling of, of being you know having your um your the wind going through your hair and you have that kind of um freedom of freedom that feeling of freedom like you've been cultivating around here and you you're just kind of doing things in a very avant-garde fashion um in a manner that's completely unexpected and so that is that could quite that could quite easily yield from this and that would make sense in terms of this card because you have the confidence here uh to 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 do that as you move along because you know that it's going to be okay you trust and you know that no matter what happens it's going to be okay and so you're able to take that and you you're able to perhaps you know move on in a, within a situation that's maybe not been just to you so there's so many ways of reading these cards and if i was reading for one particular person it would be quite different because i would know exactly what applies to you but here as i'm reading for so many different people i have to give you all of the options and of course i can't give you as, as many as i'd like to because then the video would be way too long so i hope this does resonate with you but um, as we go into November, I feel that if you are feeling that things that you you've been done wrong, or something's you know done you wrong, or somebody's done you wrong, I feel that there isn't a need to really um, um, interact with that or to approach it or to confront it at that given moment, but rather to just take some time out and to um, to try to heal the situation from an emotional point of view to feel what you've been feeling around here and take a moment back and just kind of see if there's something that you can do to work with that and heal that there's also a chance here that you might be falling in love with somebody um, that can be the case for that card Are you falling in love with somebody you're about to make a proposal to them you're about to ask them on a date it's quite significant this happens around october and november by the way and um yeah, it's just like you're taking a break from your normal life and you're just taking a break from all of this stuff that's been going on here and you moving on. So if there has been a kind of breakup here or some kind of divorce or something like this, I feel that by um, the end of November, you'll be feeling like, wow, what a year it's been. And uh, let's just take some time out and let's look at what our options are. You know, maybe you could kind of, start thinking about dating again or something like this if it is a divorce scenario and i'm sorry to bring that up but these cards kind of talk about something like this so for some of you that might resonate if it is a divorce scenario you might lose something in the in the court process uh as in you've lost some kind of you've you know you've you've, you've felt that the whole process the legal process was unjust to um and you bore the brunt of that and i think here if you have been through that you're just kind of in a feeling of relief and and just happy that that's beyond you and now you can kind of move on in your life it's not necessarily jumping into love but you can uh begin the healing process on yourself after that is finished but then you do have here the three of chalices and so i feel that in the year is going to end on a good note you're going to have uh parties you're going to be meeting people you're going to be enjoying yourself you're going to be letting your hair down and you're going to really be of enjoying yourself um, in a way that you are free from these things and this here and you know this kind of arguing etc that's been there 
and um, and this kind of feeling of of not being um, not really having your way with something. This kind of uh, two of cups can also be that you've found love, but it's not really meeting all your needs, and um, and so this is something that you know it kind of just dis disappoints you in a way. And so that is the uh, reading, and I hope that you've gained something from it and that you are able to um, prepare for, your, for some of these eventualities and avoid them <laughs> uh, if they are negative and embrace them if they are very positive. Um, I, you know, this is also a positive card of having one's wealth and one's well-being. Um, this is also very positive. And I feel here this judgment, making a decision is always a good thing to do. So, yeah, you know, these can be kind of like the the main cards for for your for the different terms that you have in this year. Um, I'm just wondering if there's anything else here. You know, sometimes when I do these readings, I'm picking up on the energies that are quite strong and quite um, that, are, that are quite um, potent, if you want to call it that. And so there could be a whole lot of other scenarios which are much more subtle, which I have not picked up on uh, because, you know, what's the strongest emotion comes to the fore. And then I see that much more clearly and uh, I could spend another hour or two or three sitting here and just talking about the different meanings of this card. But I think I'm going to leave it there. And so, yes, I wish you all a very blessed 2023. And just remember the cards are just um, kind of guidance as to where you're heading. And it doesn't necessarily mean that this has to be your reality. You can change this by visualization, meditation, and attracting what it is that you want in your life. All right. So I wish you all a very blessed 2023. Much love and um, blessings abound from Kismet Rising.